I am at the hotel in Mexico City, Mexico, in United Mexico. Uh, I've shown all of your tweets demeaning me, uh, making fun of me, saying that I got naked, uh, calling me an idiot. I showed them to the concierge, and they agree that you guys are all wrong. I'm actually having dinner and laughing at all of you right now, not thinking about you at all. And that's one of my favorite things about being mad online, which is, of course, the subject of this episode. It's this fascinating thing where, and I'll actually be remarkably fair on people who get mad online now, because it's a human thing, but... I don't know why people think people shouldn't be mad online. You ju- you see something you don't like in real life, it'll probably piss you off. If you're online, you'll probably be mad too. Yeah, I mean, not to delve too deep into this before we really dive into this, but, uh, like, man, shit, I get mad online all the time. Like, I, especially in the morning. I'm not a morning person. Uh, I mean, I guess you really can't call the time that I wake up morning. Crack a noon. Because, crack a noon. <laughs> Three o'clock. I mean, like, no, I usually wake up at 11 because I am a piece of shit and I don't have to go anywhere. Uh, but for, I'm still, like, in a bad mood when I wake up, even though I don't have to go anywhere because I'm just, like, a piece of shit. Right. But, like, I'll, like, see an article or something. Like, I saw this article about Mohammed bin Salman, the deputy crown prince of Saudi Arabia, that was, like, the startup prince. Like, what we made fun of or I'll <laughs> see, like, I'll just see somebody, like, just being, like, glib about something that pisses me off. But wouldn't elicit a reaction if I had seen it four hours after I woke up, and I'll just, like I'll just get so fucking mad, and be like, "This person should die." I hate it. Like, <laughs> but it's like it's a human reaction. It's normal to get mad. But where it gets weird is that is the way in which online is weird. Online is weird because you get to pick exactly how you come off to people, and it's weird because you get to. People learn about what you think is good values to show people, what you what you always wish that people saw in you. And the only thing that's universal is that people don't want to seem emotionally involved, even though we're just staring at this fucking screen for hours a day with flat faces, feeling every range of emotion internally. But no, none of us are invested in no, it. Nobody's mad ever. And that's what I don't get. But what's, it it all comes back to, in my mind, this horrible fucking concept of personal branding, that it's all just a complete persona. And obviously, yes, you're controlling what you're saying, so there is some degree of persona. But it's the people who desperately try and prove they're not mad through intellectualism. And it's not just Benedict Evans and people like him. There was that Rebois fellow I think I mentioned before, who is a... He is gay, and yet he exercised this freedom of speech by yelling faggot at someone, some professor, I don't even remember, but I remember coming at him for something dumb he said about don't be, like, he was saying that stress was good, which I think is a, a like a poisonous belief. I think if you think... No, that's like literally medically untrue. But he, <laughs> but he had read so many books, and he's kind of not mad is my, one of my favorites, because it is one that goes across the spectrum. Tech, politics, consumer journalism, just anything. It's just the, the it goes to the very highest levels of power because ultimately when a president has to respond to something, they have to show how not mad they are. They kind of had to just be benign. Yeah, it was like uh when Obama like remember in two thousand twelve when like Trump Trump just was like half heartedly like, Oh, I'm gonna find his birth certificate from uh Africa. Uh, the nation of Africa and Obama, like Obama, like probably like this has been like it was uh, the birther thing is obviously been like a racial racialized weird thing with Obama ever since like oh yeah. seven really. So I would imagine that he, you know, if I was Obama it would make me really fucking mad. But because of the world we live in, like whatever communications person was like, no, you have to you have to make a joke about it. And that's a mic drop moment. And it's like, why, like, 
we are implicitly like making fun of people for being mad and hiding it, but like it's okay to be like I would. It would be cool if he like immediately got mad about that and was like, "Suck my dick! I fucked millennia. <laughs> your kids look inbred. Fuck you. you. Your children look like human DNA and cheese was combined." Yeah, Eric. Eric Trump looks like a piece of string cheese that got caught on an escalator. And that's, you know what, I would really respect, and one of the reasons I like Parliament at times, not what they do, just how they act, because it's basically an episode of MTV's Your Mama, as I think I've said before, where it's just like, well, I think the right honourable gentleman in the shadow cabinet, he's a twat, and his mum takes up the arse three times a day. Well, I think you'll find I've shagged your mother in the arse this morning. If only Parliament was that great. But... Obama, I kind of wish, like, there, he had got actually mad and, and just said, listen, you old white racist, I am from Hawaii, here is my birth certificate, I'm only answering just so that you and anyone else who just decides to demonize the random black people that you see on the street and are scared of, don't have the power that you think you have. And yes, you have the power to get a response from the president, congratulations. But really, shut up, you old racist. Imagine if he'd have said that. How awesome would this country be? Yeah, but like, I think, I think this is, this is like a key difference between Britain, Britain and America is that for whatever reason in America, we oftentimes see anger as dirty and we have a weird, we have a complex relationship with the idea of anger. We love righteous anger in a way. We like, we like a vendetta. We like, you know, after 9-11, it was, yeah, like, fuck you, fuck you, Bin Laden, or, like, fuck cancer. We like being <laughs> mad at things that none of us are going to physically touch or really have any effect on. But the idea of getting mad because of what someone said about you, because of because of a belief, like, you're not allowed to get mad of, uh, based on a uh, uh, an ideological reason, which is quite weird. Like, it's, it's seen as, as filthy as we see sex, and... You know, I'm not, I'm obviously not a cultural theorist or a linguist, but I just, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's our Puritan culture, but it just, it's something that we can't touch in America that much as opposed to Britain where, yeah, like Jeremy Corbyn can call Nick Clegg a twat. <laughs> I, I wish he would. I wish that that's how this course just began. It became like schoolyard style, just straight up. Straight up, just like, you know what? Just, just, you're all fuckwits. Just fuck you all. I'm Jeremy Corbyn. Well, it's like, okay, what is, what is like the biggest fantasy for, what is the biggest political fantasy show we have? That's like fantasy football for people who wear lanyards. It's the West <sighs> Wing. And like on the West Wing, like they don't even get mad like real people. Like when someone's like, like they bring in the most straw man character ever. Like his, like, uh, I'm Republican Senator. Uh, I hate gays. Johnson. <laughs> it's 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 uh, Ronald Mc hate gay gun haver. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, if your daughter wanted to have an abortion, would you do it personally? <laughs> <laughs> like like shit like that. And the president instead will be like, "You you low down sob. Now listen to me. There is okay. So like my favorite, and by favorite I mean war scene in the West Wing." was the president's secretary dies. She's like 80. Yeah. But he just acts like it's like the big, like, oh, I can't believe it. It came uh, out of nowhere. No, who could have seen it coming? <laughs> and he like, this fucking dick in the show, he rents out the National Cathedral for a funeral. Wow. Like, they wouldn't even allowed Bush to do that in 2002 if his secretary died. No. Like, right after 9-11, like, in, like, October 2001, if Bush's secretary died and he was like, I want to use the National Cathedral, they'd be like, fuck off. He eats shit. <laughs> he gets the National Cathedral and he, like, this is, like, the scene that everyone loves. And it's the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. He walks around the church and goes, you feckless thug. What? How dare you? Like, he's, like, he's talking down God. But again, that's, like, not how So he's mad at God. But- yeah, it's like he's like he's telling God how many jobs he created. <laughs> like, Didn't God create all like, jobs? I created five point three million jobs in the last eighteen months, and you killed my secretary, you son of a bitch. But it's like that's not how people get angry. That's not real. Like that's when you get like 
you know what was the best portrayal of ang- like the realest portrayal of anger ever in like American TV or cinema was Deadwood and fucking Seth Bullock, the angriest character in the history of TV. After they kill Wild Bill Hickok, uh, he talks to the guy who killed Wild Bill Hickok, and he's like, "You fucking cocksucker!" And he's getting so mad that he's crying, like it's just uncontained. It's not like a beautiful soliloquy where he proves his point. He's it's just unbridled rage and fear like fear of the own harm that you can cause like it's but we can't admit that's in us which is weird because you know think of all the acts of destruction that you know we did in our times of righteous that anger i've done today i mean i, I saw yeah. the mail, mailman drive past don't know why he was out on a sunday but i threw a fucking half drunk can of cause light at him and i called him a racial slur that wasn't even appropriate he's from china and I called him a gas leopard. He just, he stopped, looked at me and left. What's gas leopard for? I haven't made that up yet. I'm working on it. Uh, I will update the slur spreadsheet we're working on. Scumbag premium subscribers. Me and Ed are creating new racial slurs that only premium subscribers can use. <laughs> only $5,000 a month. Yeah, that's, that's our Patreon. Yeah, I just got, I got to squeeze these pay pigs. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, but back to the online where we live and we will die. The, one of the one of the things that really gets me about so this kind of and it really is cross cultural online at least this amazing thing where you're not allowed to get fully mad and it has personally affected my career. I've had people not hire me, not actually many, but occasionally I'll hear because I have said the word fuck on Twitter. I mean, they read. I'm like fuck this fucking shit. And they're like, well, nope, nope, not that guy. That guy's gonna. He's going to go and he's going to go and he's going to pitch it. And he's going to be like, these guys, they're just a bunch of fuck fucks. And I, I will not have that. I'll hire the the nice guy who does not say fuck and he loves coffee. And it's incredible because I've had people be like, whoa, 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 whoa. You were, you were calling me every word under the sun, but you said fuck. Easy there, tiger. Well, that, I mean, as I understand it, you're, you're like pretty good at PR. Mm-hmm. You're okay. Yeah, I get- no, you're like really fucking good well, at it. Well, thank you. But I, I see this is the British in me. I can't even fucking take that. But assume I am. Yeah, you you, you people aren't repressed at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm constantly repressed. <laughs> that's why Midwestern, Midwesterners and British people get along. Yeah, that's it. We're, we're just consistently, we're repressed by something. We'll, we'll get back to you with what it is. <laughs> I think it's Protestant. That's it. That's, you know what? That's it. We so, we've sold being mad. But seriously, though, people and people in PR are fucking amazing, though, to get mad. And we can start with with just people who are on social media in general getting mad are fantastic. So the people who are they have to be there for work. So you the whole line from Benedict Evans to Rebois, Rebois, don't know. He got mad at me and his response to someone when he said, read the books in 10. To me, which is the best insult ever, by the way. Wait, it, he said read a, read a book? <laughs> ba- basically, I called him out for saying that stress was bad for you. It was good for you. And I said it was bad because I've been stressed. And I assume jacking off and spending other people's money is pretty easy going. And he responded to me by, I don't know, he said read a book sometime, you're an idiot. And I was like, okay, I'm on a plane, I'm fucked up on vodka. Because it was these little minty drinks, whatever. Anyways, so somehow I, a drunkard on a plane, was more restrained than he was. And I was just kind of like, what What are you talking about, you anus? And he blocks me, of course, which is the first line of madness. And someone responded to him and said, I've read quite a lot of books and you're still wrong. And he's like, well, I have over a thousand books in my library. That doesn't mean anything. Like, I was, I was, at, my, I was at my mom's house this week. Uh... And she, like, she, there were, like, probably 4,000 books there. And I grew up there. And, like, I don't know any. I've read, like, maybe, I've actually read, like, three and a half books. <laughs> maybe, like, two if you don't count, like, strategy guides. But uh, that just, like, no, that's the kind of self-seriousness in saying that you're not mad. <laughs> <laughs> you're so I'm so respectable that I'm just defying any logical conclusion of what this person just said to me. 
I, that's what's weird to me. Like, okay, so they didn't hire you because they said because you said fuck. So I'm gonna hire someone who just represses all their emotions and kills themselves internally. Just like can't be themselves. That's a good. That's the type of person I want relating to the public. Just <laughs> most of a fucking repressed psychopath. Yes, I want someone who is so controlled. Like, like, like this venture capitalist fellow that they can stop themselves from saying the word fuck, just tunnel it in themselves. Like the person who is definitely thinking once in their life, what if I just brought a gun? What if I just fucking kill? You know what? If they were dead, it would be better. But don't worry, it won't go anywhere badly because social media and mocking on it has never led to deaths. But it's amazing. And, and I love the, and this is really the mad one. Mad one is always, I'm not mad, all right? This isn't bothering me at all. This is so easy to deal with. That's why I'm responding to every single post. If you at message me, you bet your balls I'm going to have some retort. I'm going to be on your fucking shit. I'm going to be up your asshole. And people are going to think I'm tweeting for you from your account. That's how on you I'm going to be. And I love it. I love those people because they're so not mad, but they're fucking fury. You can imagine them like Murder, She Wrote. It's fucking red faced. Yeah, you know where that comes from? That comes from like 2003 and like gaming forums. You go to the off topic board and... <laughs> You get like people just get in these insane, stupid arguments, oh. and there's always like one get like there are two. Every all all the regular infantry falls down; they can't hold up to the heat of the debate, and it gets down to like two guys, and they're just quoting each other's entire <laughs> post and debunking it point by point, and it's going on for weeks. And it's like no one who's reading this, a eh? like why would you want why would you want to read like Goku three eighty seven debate. <laughs> Like the other guy about the Iraq war, but it ju it just like endless stamina. Some guys have that like endless stamina to do it. And you wouldn't do that if you weren't emotionally invested. Like, why the fuck would you just like at reply somebody for hours? Like, dude, I've fucking done it. I've gotten in stupid arguments like that where I'm just I'm like so invested to it. I'm like, no, I can't let him get the last word. But at the, well, you can't do that and then be like, oh, I don't care about this. This is fun to me. If that's your idea of fun, dude, what's going to happen when you, like, have sex? <laughs> your fucking head's going to explode. You think there's just going to be, I'm waiting for the day that one of the Fab Star people has sex. And it just posts like, guys, I just had the most incredible experience and all of this seems meaningless now. Oh, I would. I was thinking it's going to happen is, like, it's not going to be good. Like, it'll be, like, the first time when you, like, can't come because yeah. you're nervous. And I'm so glad that happened to someone else as well. <laughs> I think it happens to a lot of people. Yeah, but but anyway, enough about our car. I, I hope it does. I hope I didn't just like I I hope it's like not like me and you're the only people it happened to, and everyone who's listening to this is like, what the fuck is wrong with your dicks? But uh, <laughs> like, I hope that like those guys like it's just very disappointing, and they're like, oh my god, why was I DMing girls and like writing like saying why was I saying all these like twee saturated things after mass shootings this is stupid i'm gonna go become a uh a, a cpa fuck fame star it's like they go and like shave off their horrible horrible like puby beard and they go get a haircut like a regular person and they go work at like safeway and they're really happy you know, they're just... Yeah, they're like, I'm I'm asexual now. I don't have to be on Fabestar anymore. Or even just, I like this dream world of that they've been mad about someone stealing their tweets, and then they have sex, and maybe they don't see the girl past date three, but they're like, when they have sex, they're like, wow, that was really, really good. Like, that was great. I want that again. And all this kind of seems just like I was wasting my time. So I'm going to go and just have a normal life. I'll see you guys never. And... Peace out. And then lots of people would be mad at them or think they were joking. That's so, but like, that's, but like, when people really do that, like, that's my favorite move is this is, and I notice like it's old people who do this, and I don't know why, but when they're mad in an argument, they like tell the person who's beating them in the argument, like, yeah, go get laid. I love that one as well. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> It's a, it's always like the horny people of online, the horny old people of online who are just making everybody uncomfortable with their shit. Like, oh, go get, go have sex. And it's like, first of all, Tony Soprano had sex all the time yeah. and he was angry all the time. So like, there you go. You don't even know anything. Tony Soprano is a real guy. Allow me to quote the documentary Drive Angry, which also has 
Angry in the title. I will have you know that the the star of Drive Angry, Nicolas Cage, Sir Nicolas Cage, knighted by the Queen, he had a great deal of sex in that movie. He could have railed anyone he wanted, and he was angry, much like the title, the entire film. By your logic, you've proven my point. Yeah, well, like, look, dude, fucking who had more sex than Henry VIII? Yeah. It's fucking nobody, and he was mad. All like he was like causing wars because of how mad he was and how much like he wanted to get laid more. Like it was never enough for him. You just like if you're saying that like the only people who like when they're in an argument to or go get laid are people people in high school and people who are like they're still online at like age sixty and having debates <laughs> with people. Like those are the only two groups of people who think that's a good retort and. The next time it happens, and this sounds like I'm showing off, I actually want to try and next time someone says that to me, it's never actually been said to me, so I'm going to have to file this away for never when it happens. I do want to try and go and have sex and come back to the argument and see how I feel. I mean, I would I would actually try having the argument while I'm having sex. <laughs> honey, 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 please, please. <laughs> uh, Goku420 Bona Anus has made a point about the Iraq war I just don't agree with. Stop. When I finally get a box frame, I'm going to do the thing that, like, the the guys who have given up sex uh, do. I'm going to, like, put a flashlight in between the mattress and the bed frame. Wait. All right. All right. And I know we talked about being mad, but wait, what? Yeah, I'm going to put... Okay, so a lot of guys do this where... This is totally normal. A lot of guys do this uh, where they... <laughs> they put a flashlight in between the mat their mattress and their bed frame. And then they, like, put an anime girl or something, like, on an iPad, so it's like they're fucking the anime girl. So, like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the argument <laughs> in place of the anime girl. <laughs> and, and that's the thing as well, like, I don't think I've seen a go get laid since the EverQuest forums I posted on when I played EverQuest, which is actually, if you take a picture of people having sex and put it in MS Paint and hit the invert button... It's a picture of the cover of the EverQuest box. <laughs> well, like, okay, a lot of people actually did get married because of EverQuest. Well, they got married in EverQuest. But people used to get super mad in that game. Holy shit, one of the best mad online moments was around the time World of Warcraft was in beta. And, like, this Five of Heaven guild, they, like, between, I don't know, pissing in jugs... They went and they went to like this place in the game and it wasn't working properly. And this guy who now works at Blizzard, of course, fucking went off on one. He was like, that's it. That, do you know what? Sony Online Entertainment. I'm just, I'm just sick of this shit. You then fixed the plane of time. And now I'm going to fuck. It's going to turn into the world's biggest World of Warcraft forum. And people fucking went apeshit. They were like, I have like three details, but I'm mad for you. <laughs> I have... I mean, like, that is probably, like, everyone's first experience with Mad Online is multiplayer games. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's 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 a natural birthplace for it because... And, that, and this is why I hate the fact that a lot of games are multiplayer these days. Because when you meet other people in games, they're usually not great. And I'm not... I get mad at games. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm terrible. Like, I'm not quite... Full scale, I will, like, break my screen with my controller. But if it's getting shit, I'll be like, I'm going, I'm done, fuck this shit. No, like, I, no, I, so I just, I just, like, beat Max Payne 3. And that's, like, that's, like, a pretty fucking hard game in the later levels. Right. And, like, I was just, like, if you recorded me while I was playing in the police station level, like, my family would disown yeah. me. <laughs> It's like a horrible st stream of pure rage. But, I mean, like, I, God, one of my first memories of playing Counter-Strike when I was probably, like, 13 was we were playing, we were playing CS Office, and this guy, this guy, like, for somehow, you know, we were on Ventrilo, too, and this guy, like, was somehow claiming that he was, <laughs> he was like, some type of drug dealer. Right. Like, that he was making all this money and everyone else is a piece of right, shit. Right, so he was he was playing Counter-Strike between deals, I suppose? Yeah, I mean... Okay. But he... he 
And, like, I sort of, like, you just, you know, through your memory being distorted, you kind of, like, forget exactly what people said. Because, like, why why would yeah. you? You can't. You wouldn't hold on to that. But the one thing I'll always remember is he goes, you don't know anything about me. In my house, I got techno shit that would make your eyes bleed. Hmm. And I didn't even know what that meant. Like, he was going to torture people or that it was, like, so high-end that I would just lose my mind. It would be, like, in scanners when the guy's head explodes. And I just, I always thought about it. And, like, when I was that age, I was like, oh, I was wondering, is he, like, is that, like, some cool thing people say that I don't get because I'm 13? And now I realize, after thinking about it for 12 years, uh, he was just so mad he couldn't make sense. He was, like, sputtering. He's probably, like, bit his tongue as he was writing No, that. no, that's not what it... I think you totally misunderstood him. He had great techno shit. He was a DJ. <laughs> well, I, I think that he meant he had, like, a two-screen monitor <laughs> or on one monitor, or, like, two monitors where you could monitor the drug deals on he one. He had an ISDN line. Counter-Strike. Yeah, but I destroyed him. I fucked him up. Ah, oh, that must... And that's... M4A1, bitch. And that's... Headshot. That's the great thing, though. And that's what... So if you think about, you get that, if we look at the divisions of Mad Online, you've got the ones who are just straight up like, fuck you, pussy motherfucker. And those have actually become quite scary now, because it always used to be kind of adorable when you play, I don't know why you punish yourself by playing Halo, but you could. And there'd always been some 12 or 13 year old calling you a faggot. Just, just, there you are. If there wasn't one, you weren't on the right server. But now these people have, obviously, through, through GG... Can't even fucking say it. I don't know if they'll come onto the podcast. That'd be weird. But you've got... Oh, uh, I actually... I invited oh, them. God damn it. But it's... Sorry. You've got... I mean, apart from the people who are really mad online, ISIS, but apart from ISIS, you've got people who are, like, mad on Twitter, and being anonymously hateful is Taylor's oldest time, Beauty and the Beast. But Jesus Christ, they have unbelievable access to just being fucking putrid. But they are not an interesting analysis for a podcast that's quite surface level and mostly recorded while both of us are hopped up on drugs. What is interesting is watching the very intellectual people get angry and watch them desperately, desperately try to show not how not angry they are. And we, of course, always come to, to the wild man himself, Kurt. And I found one post from earlier that just really... Dis this is him being mad, but very subtly. It's happy 4th of July. Remember, at any time, it might just be your duty to get your freedom on. Now, that's not where he got mad, though. Someone responded, Malcolm Black, Blackzilla63 on Twitter, of course. And he says, join the military. You forgot to add something. And Kurt said, oh, I've not forgotten. Picture of him in the military. That's him mad. Yeah. For people who aren't familiar with the entire Kurt Schlichter canon, and, like, if you are, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> This is the greatest story of our yeah. time. Kurt was a lawyer in Bosnia <laughs> in the 90s, which, like, he, like, if you are not speaking Serbian today, thank Kurt. He protected you. But, like, the, Kurt, Kurt on holidays, that's when he's the least, like, the most trying to not be mad. Because if you, you want to rewind about a year or two ago in, in, in Kurtdom, Kurt went on, like, what had to be about a $20,000 vacation yeah. through Europe. He went to some amazing places, and I, of course, was following all of it because it ruled. But everywhere he went, he would take, like, just a scowling selfie <laughs> in, you know, in, like near, like, a Roman aqueduct or something and go, Liberal, liberals are the diggleberry on the asshole of humanity. Suck it. And he's brilliant as well, because you don't even need to look hard to see how mad he is. June 26th, and we're recording, of course, July 3rd. So not long ago, picture of him and just his friend, John Gabriel, whoever it is, I'm not clicking, I'm not finding out, regaling each other with tales of George Will's sexual adventures. Hashtag caring. And it's great, because... I'd love to imagine this other poor fucker is just like, oh, Kurt, just put the phone away, Matt. Come on. He's like... <laughs> it's like, no, I gotta fucking show them how much I don't fucking care. All right? You know what it's like? He's like, um, he's like, uh, Vincent in Gattaca. <laughs> and his friend, his friend is like, his brother's like, put it away. Kurt, you can't do it. Kurt, no. You're gonna drown. You're so mad. <laughs> and Kurt's like, no. I always have to tweet it. 
I always have to let people know. I never saved anything for the ride back. There's there's a uh, Star Wars prequel, a very long tail analysis of the Star Wars prequels, and there's a bit of it where it's got this weird storyline of him kidnapping a hooker. He's like, no, I need to share my pain. I need to tell them. Except that's a fictional character, and fucking Kurt is real. He's he's real. He's like. He's just, like, there's this really hilarious one where he's posting a random vine and it's like my imitation of the mainstream media, the approach of my new town hall column dropping in five minutes, caring. And it just looks like him yelling and like dropping the camera on his face. <laughs> no, yeah, that's the thing. He takes like, he takes like the weirdest angles. of so It's like if somebody, if it's like he's been captive in his own house <laughs> by ISIS for the past five years, and they're telling him to take selfies <laughs> to prove that he's not under under duress, but he's just, like, through his eyes trying to signal for help. And I don't want to crib too heavily off of your New York magazine that distilled the phenomena of mad too well, but he is the king of, this isn't making me mad. It's actually funny to me, which is my favorite intellectual thing, because what it actually is is a recreation of no doubt what happened to them on the schoolyard where a bully was like, well, you're a big gay. And the kid was like, um, no, um, um I actually like women. He'd be like, uh, yeah, you like a woman. Duh. And everyone high fives him. And he's desperately trying to explain it to him. He's like, well, this didn't offend me because it's so stupid. And he was like eight-year-old Kurt Slichter, like whatever he is, pushing his glasses up and like crying. But he's not mad. Like walking away. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's that type. Well, like you saw, you saw Kurt on like the famous clip of Kurt on TV, oh. where he's he's on CNN and he's like arguing that we need to ban Muslims from entering America. Uh, and he's someone. He says something ridiculous. He says, I think he goes like, a uh, study show that like twenty five percent of Muslims agree with El- with ISIS. Yeah, which is like what. Uh, really? <laughs> and yeah, okay. Really, Kurt? There are 1.3 billion Muslims. I see. <laughs> but, uh, D- it, how many? How many white people agree with the IRA? <laughs> um. Well, like if you count me as white, and I count as two people. I'm very big. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> but uh, Kurt, like this woman he's arguing with goes uh what studies showed that and he literally he's like porky the pig goes what he just can't get it right he can't even get a sentence out he can't even get a fucking word out and that's like that's the real kurt he's just like the fucking angry guy who got tongue tied so now he just he spends all his like all the time on twitter just arguing with people and trying to get his legions of other overly tanned weird old men to yell at people <laughs> but even then he's still he's still like not good at it because he gets he's so emotionally invested because he's just like reliving this time probably when he was a kid that he got into an argument and just, like just, just totally totally fucked himself up and it goes back to that kind of self-importance that we were discussing last episode where like okay i've i've got some level of success Okay, I must be always right. And what's great is that Keith Rebois, Rebois, I'm never going to look. I'm never going to care. But looking in his mentions as well is amazing because recently he's an investor and he probably, just like all of these fucking guys, like they're all venture capitalists who they were like the co-founder or the CTO of fucking Gunt Inc. or like Twatley or something. And, like, they they think that they're fucking geniuses because they were part of a product that was... Yeah, even if you did fucking co-found PayPal, which I think he has something to do with PayPal. I, I'm not researching it. And someone could probably argue with me, like, my argument is void. I don't care. But he starts arguing with journalists. And he's like... It, it's this guy, Eric Newcomer, who's, who's a good reporter. And he just starts ripping... Out of nowhere, it just barges into this argument. I love imagining these guys as well. Anytime they enter an argument, like smashing a Saab through a wall. <laughs> they're, just, they're in their garage and they just back out. No, I like it. I, an entire rack of skis falls down. <laughs> I like this other scenario though. I've started imagining it every time where like two people are having like a nice conversation in a diner. It just, 
sob through the wall. It has to be a sob. <laughs> and it's like, um, go back to writing your hack pieces. That's like, I, I, I like the guys who like, they enter an argument and then you like, you, if you're like flip it to them or glib and you're you, like, you just, I always like, so I always say like stupid shit. Like if someone like has a psychologist in a bio, I go like, you're not a psychologist. You didn't even go to college, buddy. <laughs> Or just, like, purposely fuck up their name, even though it's right in front of me. Like, just immature yeah. shit. They'll, like, scream at me. Like, I just came up with to them to screw up their names on purpose. Like, I... Some guy, some guy like, just yelled at me the other day, and he... Yeah, he had psychologist in his name. He's like, doctor, I have a PhD. PhD in psychology. And I just replied, you're not a psychologist. And... He just like he wrote a tweet essay that no one no one cared about where he's like this is what happens when you try to talk to the trolls. Uh look look at what this asshole said. Well, I looked at all the people who faved that tweet and that's just another more people going onto my block list. And it's like this didn't have to happen. Like you didn't have to get yourself into all of this. Like it's I it's so obvious that I'm trying like I'm trying to fuck with you. By like taking the one thing that you are and telling you that you're not that, it's the it's the most telegraphed punch in history, and yet people always fall for it. I don't know why. I don't either, and I love arguing with people, and it, 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 people I have no interest in an actual civilized debate with. I always love to go for the least mature thing, and I love to just fuck with them. Not really in a mean-hearted way. Never in some way where I'm like, "Oh, nice ears, dickhead." Like something like like something that. Doesn't even make sense. Like, they probably have normal-sized ears. Or, like, <laughs> couldn't get a color picture? That one's black and white. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, wait, wait, what? And they've never had to think about their picture until this moment. And they're, like, mad that someone doesn't like it. Because deep down, they're really self-conscious about that. But they're thinking that I'm thinking on that level. They're thinking that I'm sitting there being like, huh, oh, I'll go after the picture. And you know what? That will really rip into them psychologically. Well, I'm sitting there, like, fucking... Dude, just, a, do, 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 just typing away, fucking, fucking around online. Oh, someone's being a dick. Yeah, nice black and white picture. Couldn't afford a color camera or some shit. Like it's just, and they're like, no. And that's you know, I I think I figured it out. I think I know why that gets people so much because they're trying to have a moment where they're they're like they want to pull you to this level where they're like, we're going to have a debate about this. Like we are going to see, you're going to see my point. You're going to look like shit. Everyone in the movie theaters going to applaud, but it's like you're, you're interrupting their moment. They're trying to like make a movie scene. They're trying to make their own West wing scene. And by like, it'd be, they'd be less mad. If you like just did an amazing stroke of logic, beat them in an argument. What makes them mad is people, like, no, like, no, like, people acknowledge, or like, breaking through that fourth wall to be like, no, this, who gives a shit? This is silly. You're just yelling on Twitter. I'm going to make it as silly as it is. And that, like, the idea, the idea of them confronting the own meaninglessness of this just hurts them more than anything. Because they've built up this identity. They've gotten to portray, like, like we talked about, they've gotten... They found this platform where they get to portray themselves as anything they want to be, and what they want to be is this like just tr- truth teller. No one can stand up to my barrage of logic and facts. And then you purposely misspell their name or <laughs> ask them a stupid fucking question. And like, no, 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 no. This is not how the movie plays out. It's like when a guy who does Krav Maga or Aikido tells like goes all right this is a move i just learned all right punch at me no with the other arm with the other arm no slower no slower okay can you kneel down and do it to do some rehearsed combat move that would never work in a fight and they're just so pissed that their movie scene did not play out like they wanted it and i actually always wonder when people jump into the middle of arguments when they sob through the diner window and it's beep beep getting out of the car so, in this example, it was some New York Times reporter, Mike Isaac. I actually know that guy. I shouldn't have called him some. And he was tweeting about Zenefits and something, something. Silicon Valley don't care. We already know. We don't care. So, there was some, like, point he made about, like, basically Zenefits. They did something. And David Sachs, the CEO, did something and something. And then in comes the VC. Smash. Diner window gone. Sales never reported to him. Guy responds, well, parts of the organization should have been licensed did. That's false. 
So this guy doesn't work for the fucking company. He just says no. Just no. Why is that? Okay, I've noticed that these VC guys, like the guys who their name is always like Birch <laughs> or fucking Glob, like it's it's like the they, they don't have an underscore or their last name or something because they were on Twitter since 2006. Yeah. They always, like, always, if you say anything, even talking about any specific company or just the concept of angel investments or some shit, they lose their entire shit. They'll just jump in wherever. It's like they have a search column up to be pedantic to people. Yeah. Topics I'm mad about or topics I want to yell at people about. But the best part is this conversation goes on for, like, ever, just back and forth. With this Eric Newcomer fella, lovely fella, just, like, trying to actually say he, he responds to just no to that is false as he should and this guy this guy who is a stanford attorney and a vc so this guy has so much money responds to, yes it is no evidence just fucking yes it is and this just terrible vacuous argument goes on until eventually this guy literally ends with it's definitely true that people reported up to david sachs the ceo who had licensing problems go ask david so literally he, his argument is if you think I'm wrong, go and ask David Sachs, the CEO. He'd probably confirm it. Eric is not a stupid fella. He wouldn't play that game if David Sachs wouldn't answer. And he goes, and this this VC, very well read. He has over a thousand books. Go back to writing your hack pieces. The I mean, so, Amazing. Like, so he jumped it. He fucking jumped in there and started the whole argument. And like, yeah, no, that always. It always fucking happens like that, though. It always happens like that. Like, someone just jumps in just to shut down the troll. But, it like, they just end angrier than when they started. Like, these are, these are all the people that talk about fucking ad hominem, blah, 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 blah <laughs> fucking whatever. But it's, that's the first thing they go to. When, so, when someone just doesn't, like we say, act out a scene in their movie with them. And do you think that's it? Because... No matter how you argue online, I always jump in when I'm mad with absolutely no plan. I'm just being like, fuck this. I'm many times wrong, and I, I actually have the ultimate tactic when it comes to Twitter. A little bit of tweet seek, seeks, as I call them, secrets. I just trademark that. I'm cool. But seriously, the best way, if you're wrong about something, is to just go, oh, I didn't know that. Sorry. Yeah, no, like, I've, I've done There's no shame in that. Like, I, uh... My life has been fine since the last time I admitted I'm wrong. That upsets people, though. People get even angrier when you admit that because they're like, no, 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 come back here. I wasn't done. No, you're still, you're, you're wrong. I know I'm wrong. I said sorry. No, no. How dare you? I don't know what the end game for it is. It's like they're running for something. They're running from something. And the only way to evade this problem or their internal sense of dread is to just keep having this shitty argument, but on exactly their terms. And I don't like, I don't know what would drive you to keep going after someone going, oh, I didn't know that. I don't even know it would, like, the only time I will stick in an argument online is usually because you've actually got to me. Really, you've got to me, I'm fucking annoyed, and I don't have anything to distract myself with. Or, I actually care about you, and I don't want to have an argument with you, and I actually kind of want to either defuse it or see if I can find some common ground just to get away with it. But no, these people, I don't, I, I think what they're imagining is, I'm going to admit, I've not watched all of the West Wing, I barely remember it, but I think they're all imagining they're in scenes from that. And here are two people, or someone makes a tweet, and they're, they're imagining they're in, like, I'm imagining some sort of restaurant or area, and everyone stops doing what they're doing when they speak. So a person... A walks in, they say point, and they sob in, and they're there, and everyone goes, oh my god, and they say their point, and everyone, I guess, claps, like, da, 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 clapping away while they've met, they've, because they're superior logic, and the other person just, I, I, I guess it's like Wizard of Oz, or maybe they turn to a pillar of salt. I think it is sort of like West Wing shit, because there's like a certain rhythm these people talk with. And the, the, even their emotions, like, they just kind of, like, learned emotions from watching TV. I saw this one fucking guy. I forgot what his... I forgot who did this. But he was, like... He disagreed with something Rosario Dawson said. Right. And Rosario Dawson, she, like, came out pretty strongly for Bernie Sanders. And this guy was a Hillary supporter. He's a journalist. Uh, 
And he replies to something Rosario Dawson tweets and goes, and second of all, then puts her at in the middle of it, Rosario, like he's having an actual conversation. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I uh, You did not state this here. And he, he goes for like four or more of these just like dick condescending statements. And then he goes, I would love to talk about this more, Rosario, but I have a deadline. Like that's supposed to be him like clapping his hands and turning his back while Rosario Dawson... The <laughs> amazingly beautiful and talented actress who, like, even just her performance in 25th Hour was better than anything this guy has ever done in his life. Like, he just, he just showed her. And it's a suggestion that and what she does I, is I, well, meaningless I, I, I think, as well. It's like, I'm going off to my real big boy job while you go off and be uh, talented and successful. I'm going to go and blog now. Yeah, I'm... Oh, I have a blog to write, Missy. It was so weird and, like... It was one of the strangest behaviors I've ever seen during the, even during this strange primary filled with people's strange behavior. And I almost think like he started off mad, then he got horny. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? He's like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to nag her. I'd love it if that was the plan. Like if that was the whole thing and she reads it and she's just so unbelievably horny hearing this. Yeah, she's like, well, no one ever talks to me like this. Like, the guys who usually talk to me are other actors or fantastically successful, confident, rich men uh, and athletes. But, like, this dumpy blogger who got really mad <laughs> and then told me he had a deadline, like, I give a shit or have ever read him. He's like, he has nothing to be confident about, but he did it anyway. Can I, can I get your number? And I have to admit. Do you want to take this to DM? <laughs> wow. I'd love, you know what that would be? That's what Romeo and Juliet looks like today, except the Montagues are, I guess, actors, maybe? And, yeah. like, I don't know, the Conservative Party. There's a lot to unpack there, but not as much as there was to unpack from my shit of the week. I technically have two, because, but this one is... Love Will Be the Death of Us from the Huffington Post, which I'm only bringing up a little bit early because this guy, and I won't get to the content of the post yet, I'll get to how he reacted to the thousands of derisive tweets. He has sent, since his piece went up June 22nd, he has sent one, two, three, four, five posts. This guy's a fucking pro. He is a fucking pro. This piece, Felix, did you read it? Oh, let me take a, let me pull it up This would be the story of a guy who talks about, and the subhead is notes on the end of my marriage. And as I said on... Oh, wait, no, yeah, no, yeah, the guy, the guy who had an open marriage and then his sperm was weak. And, oh, yeah, dude, no, of course I read this. Of course I read it. And this dovetails into my shit of a week. It's, it's so fucking good. It's a great example of actually how to survive any online situation ever, or actually any bad situation ever, that gets online. Just shut up. Everyone's already forgotten, except me. I am always angry. And this piece was so amazing in its brevity and vapidity. So, I won't read the whole thing, but I will pick out some choice quotes, such as, I am 22 and a pioneer in the early age of internet dating. Now that is someone writing that with a fucking pride. He's like, yep, I'm that, I'm him. I've been here a while, Junior. <laughs> well, what a badass. <laughs> and this, this great piece, and I summarized it on Twitter as my dick is bad and my wife left me. Because the basic story is that this guy... It, meets this poor unfortunate woman who tolerates him for whatever reason and somehow she's not able to get pregnant and that's he very subtly says it's her fault without actually ever truly saying it he just continually talks about how much pain he's in with a few sentences here and there about how much pain she was in and for example with each return to the clinic Catherine's enthusiasm fades you know what, right? Probably the truth, I'm guessing, was her despair grew. She seemed more upset because as a woman who probably wanted to have children with this unfortunate bad sperm man, 
she's probably not enthusiastic, but the the term is not enthusiasm when referring to your inability to produce enough sperm and just her womb rejecting him. Because he then goes to Burning Man and does his very important job at Burning Man. He goes to a temple and he gets thrown out at one point. Like, there's this, there's this great bit where he's, he's like, he goes into this Burning Man temple. And I've never b- been to Burning Man, but I, it sounds horrible. He says, I close my eyes. Hey, hey, Burning Man, what is that? Is that, is that is it Stannis Baratheon? I had a music festival. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, I'm just good. He goes into this temple and he's like, I close my eyes, exhale deeply, then begin my task. I shoot. He has his camera. He says, capturing as much of the temple as I can before she is gone. I guess the temple is temporary, which is good, because I hope that all of Burning Man is temporary. In fact, I hope Burning Man never happens again. And scarcely 20 minutes pass, and the crew begins boarding up the doorways in preparation for the burn. Dunno. I'm asked politely but firmly to leave. Dude, you got thrown out of a fucking made-up church? In a made-up place full of dick wads. And your dick is so bad that literally he fucks like three other women. And there's like, I don't know what I did. I don't know. And then she went and we had an open marriage. And he becomes Tobias Funke from Arrested Development. And actually says, let's have an open marriage. And there's, a, and it's incredible. Because he has this open marriage and he's like totally unable to get laid afterwards. Like, he's totally... Fa- and she immediately finds her business partner and, like, has a healthy child. And I won't go into much more depth, but he gets a text from his, I think, now ex-wife. And I'm going to read it <clears throat> very dramatically. I receive a text from Catherine. Layla was born this morning at 7.30 a.m. Seven pounds. I did it without drugs at home. We are well. For a moment, I had been a man driving on the highway lost in motion. For a moment, I had forgotten. Pain stabs my heart, and I text back, so this is love? The willingness to be broken again and again? Then I add, sending blessings upon your new life. It's like, okay, first of all, like, I love this article. I, I love it. I love it because he, like, he started it. He, like, caused this. Yeah. He was like, <laughs> like let's have an open marriage. And he fucked up because he has failure sperm and his wife like just finally breaks away from this piece of shit. And then he, he acts like he was betrayed in this thing that he set up, but he like, this guy's fucking amazing. And he also is just, he's appalled that people would make fun of this. Not like dude, cuck is the word of 2016. It is our biggest political, the new, the biggest political uh, new piece of political lexicon. I love that they picked that as well. Thanks, guys. My thing of the week? It's not shit. Well, it is technically in the shit of the week category. But it's sort of, you know, every coin has two sides. We just heard from a cum failure. A cum coward. What? This guy, the guy with the plural map marriage. Cum clat coward. Wait, 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 what? Who is this? Who is this individual? Cum coward? The uh the guy the the open marriage guy from Huffington You've, Post. Yeah, we've just heard about him. Yes. What does a cum hero look like? Well. Well. He looks like Ari Nagel, age forty, oh God. in Brooklyn. Six foot two, CUNY, Kingsborough, mathematics professor, who has given lesbian couples twenty two children by going to Target and jacking off his <laughs> cup. This guy's fucking awesome. This guy is the opposite of the open marriage guy. He's married. He, like, forgot to tell his wife that he was giving these lesbians all this cum. (laughs) 22 kids. He's just openly telling every newspaper about how he loves to go to Target in the bathroom to jack off. Target is the site of the culture war. This is where Rod Dreher and all the crazy conservatives are afraid that people are going to see them in the bathroom. The transgender people will see them. This guy is like, he's like a shock troop of the t- culture war. He's going in there. He's jacking off. He's like putting in a football and throwing a perfect spiral to LGBT couples. This is, this dude is fucking heroic. He could not, that Huffington Post guy, he is the worst of the millennial generation. He's entitled. He's selfish. He's weak. 
he can't he, he can't see that he causes his own problems. This guy, Ari Nagel, he is the hero of the Gen X generation. Self starter, <laughs> bold, impressive, fearless. Uh the Huffington Post guy. I finally come to terms with the tragedy my sperm has caused. Ari Nagel walking by the Pizza Hut cashier at Target, wolf whistling. Hey, can I use the Wi-Fi? <laughs> I like this as well because this story has some amazing quotes. It's better when it's fresh, he told them. <laughs> this isn't time consuming and I'm doing it anyway. And he says of his hands on hobby, it's very easy for me to do. Fuck yeah. This guy fucking rules. This guy is like, he's just like, he's speaking to the New York Post and he's just like, you know what? I'm, I thought I was going to jack off anyway. And I was going to get a slice of pizza. And I thought, fuck it, I'll go to Junior's Cheesecake. And while I'm on the way, I'll jack off in a cup. Give some gay people a baby. Fuck it. You know what's so cool about him? Like, everything is cool about him, obviously. But, like, he's... So he's a professor at CUNY. So, like, his students are reading this. And they're like, oh, wow. uh, (laughs) Professor Nagel is jacking off in Target all the time. And he, like... He knows they're going to find out about this. Like, everyone Googles... Everyone Googles their professors. Yeah. But he just... Does, he's like, he doesn't care. He's like, we well, yeah, Call me the cum professor. Call me the nutting professor. <laughs> I don't care. And what's great as well is that area in particular, unless I'm imagining where it is, it's not a flashy area either. It's not somewhere... It's somewhere where, like... Rondrea would, would Rod, 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 whatever, that, Rod Drea. Not a real Rod, name. You can just call him Rob, like I do sometimes. Uh, Rob Drea. Like that guy would, like, he'd implode there. He'd see three black people and he'd be like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> just fucking. Right, yeah. He'd be, oh, the, 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 the heathens are at the door. Like he would just, he would write another insane blog post about how it's all coming to a head. And, well, it, it is in the case of Ari, and it's. <laughs> I'm not doing it for easy action, Nagel says. Isn't that what Tinder is for? This guy... This guy's like a fucking 90s stand-up comedian. <laughs> Do you think every time he speaks, there's a slap bass? He, like, everywhere he walks, he's behind a brick wall. Yeah, and then there's just some go... Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> My favorite part is how his wife didn't know about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like... I, I just fucking... I fucking love it. I just love this entire story because this guy is, he doesn't just come a lot, but apparently he has really good sperm, just really high quality. He's a good looking guy. So if you remember Star Wars The Phantom Menace, Anakin Skywalker had a very high midichlorian count and this guy might actually be a Jedi because, so apparently this guy the prolific pro- professor is often successful, which he attributes to a high sperm count, 85 million per milliliter. And it's quoted here, it's off the charts, he boasts, and who wouldn't? The clinic said they've never seen anything like it. Fucking hell, this guy is like Darth Vader for cum. He is like... <laughs> I think he's like, he's big boss. <laughs> he is, he is, wait, yes. Except he created like 22 clones. He's like, they're going to take, that's the next phase of human evolution. Because it's like the Bible, you know, uh, his seven beget seven, beget 49, beget, like, but all his, all his kids are going to become heroes too. And they will eventually like overtake our offspring. And like, frankly, we kind of deserve it. Like if this is the competition, I am happy to lose to Ari Nagel, alpha come hero. This guy strikes me as something that, so Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden sleeping soundly and he wakes up and goes, bloody hell, I just had the most fucked up dream, love. Whoever, I don't know if he's married, I think he's married. And he's like, this poor wife is like, oh, what is it, Bruce Christ? Is it the one about the Egyptians again? He's like, no, 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 it's this bloke, he's in New York and he jacks up, he fucking wanks all the time and his cum's amazing. And his, and his <laughs> wife just rolls over, goes back to sleep. But this is actually all like, you and not to cross pollinate too much, but Chapo Trap House, you were talking about how Ron, Robbie, Roger, Drea, uh, that the, his world is, or one of, or his people who like him, like think it's like the end of Sent Elsewhere with the snow globe. 
But yeah. this is, this guy is Bruce Dickinson's. <laughs> well, this guy, this guy is the snow globe, but it's his mom. <laughs> yeah, there's no, ooh, yeah, you think it's like little bits of paper or something? Ugh, don't open that globe, mate. <laughs> I just like this guy. Like I read the story every day, and it's just like it's inspiring. It's the most inspiring shit ever, probably. And he's a nice guy, but you know what? Let's get back to being mad, because... Yeah. I just wanted to talk about the cum guy, I'm No, sorry. don't apologize, please. I'm so happy to think about him again. He's one of the only pure things in this world, much like his cum. Talking of someone who doesn't cum, and is afraid of him, Rob Dreyer. So, you listening to Chapo Trap House, I've heard a few times of this fellow, and he's a special kind of mad. He's my favorite kind of mad. The mad which is, I'm not mad, but I'm gonna write 89 million words on this fucking subject. Yeah, Rod, Rod is not known for his brevity. <laughs> because Rod has unreality issues, and he has to deal with them, and he has to deal with, like, what he sees is the collapsing of the culture. Yeah. And he also, I think he's actually a very prolific writer because what he likes to do is fake that readers write him letters that are absolutely perfectly aligned with his political opinions and are 99%. I was in a bathroom and a trans person crashed through the top and said they were going to fuck my daughter. Don't you think it's kind of weird that all Rod's friends write exactly in Rod's <laughs> syntax? And... A little bit. And they're all, like, either retired service people or defending them. I mean, I clicked a random fucking post and I hit one. I feel an urgent need to speak out in defense of the retired Marine. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. I d of course, it's always a retired Marine. It's it's amazing as well. Because it's like, it's, it's almost as if the military-industrial complex doesn't prepare people in the military from returning to normal society and thus they come back and have an immediate culture shock and thus have very polarized opinions about things could be anything though i don't like rod dreyer here's what my initial analysis of mr dreyer uh he well first of all before you before like, you go any further though do please introduce him because he's so special and only you are only you are fit to the, to introduce this maniac I have to I have to credit Will Meneker from Chapo for this because Will like I'd always known about Rod Dreher, but Will's the guy who's like, no, like really look at this guy. This guy's like really fucking <laughs> out of his mind. So Rod Dreher, he is an American conservative writer. He's an Eastern Orthodox pra practitioner, which he did not grow up doing. Uh and He's very, very concerned about trans people. Like, the focal point of his column is that people aren't afraid enough of trans people. Uh, Rod, what I zeroed in on is Rob's thing, is that he's just more afraid of sex. He's afraid of someone seeing him first. <laughs> uh, he's afraid of someone seeing his dick. He's fucking terrified of sexuality. And I think Rod, I don't know when Rod was born, probably like sometime in the late 60s. If Rod was born 20 years later, if Rod was probably born around the time I was born, he would be fine because he would go to Tumblr and he would go, oh, like, I'm asexual. I'm a cute boy who am asexual. <laughs> and that would be like, he'd be fine. He'd move, to te he'd move to Texas. He'd get like 200 dogs. He'd be fine. Yeah, no, yeah. He'd be like, he'd be like fucking donating to people's people's fucking GoFundMes and like, just like, like taking selfies. Like, huh, I'm cute and sad right now. And it'd be fine. Yeah. He wouldn't be hurt. He wouldn't be trying to hurt people or have all this hate in his heart. But because he was like born at the wrong time and has a broken, like he's just broken. He <laughs> he writes like at least he has to write like thousands of pages a year just of hypotheticals of trans people coming to fuck him up. And it's just I I don't even know how to do it because he's not the only one, and it's very much political writers. Who seem to do this, where they find a subject and they just shit it out. They're just like, fuck it, no, nope, that's it. That's it. Someone's gotta say it, even if they say exactly the same thing as anyone else. But they very much go in the realm of, aha, well, that's it. I'm, I, I've, I've stayed quiet for too long. It's been 12 hours since I wrote a column. 
And they fucking just... 4,000 ugly words come out. Chuck Tingle, the gay erotica man, writes at the same speed these people do. About dudes, like, ramming each other in the butthole with, like, a, a, some sort of metallic dick. And these guys are like, that's stupid. Let me write about how I'm scared of the trans people coming up on boats like Somali pirates. That, like, that's the, the like, the fucking mystifying thing is, like, the self-importance of political opinion writers. And, like, look, I'm sorry. I think opinion writer is the easiest job on the fucking planet. It's the easiest type of writing you can do. Sorry. It's not that hard. It's not that fucking hard at all. Uh, it just, it, it isn't. But, anyway, uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, um, they're always, like, Oh, well, you guys are going to see what I have to say about this. Like, anyone, no one cares. No one, like, you're not going to convince anybody except for the people that already like you, which is, like, not that, like, not that many people are like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see what fucking Damon Linker has to say. Can't wait to see what Jonathan Chait has to say. <laughs> no one's views are informed by this, by, like, some fucking horny old man who spends half his time tripping over his own dick on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan but, Chait being like... Um, why would you wear a choker? What? <laughs> uh, hey, uh, older guy here wondering what this EDM music is. Uh, is but, there a way uh, I can use it to have sex with you? <laughs> uh, when I did a search for him and feet. <laughs> that was interesting. But uh, fucking, I actually am excited when Rod is like, my take on this is coming out because I know that he's actually going to put some thought into it. You see, when most people write polemic, it's just they're plugging in inputs into an already existing formula that is their writing process. But with Rod, it's just like, what's he going to imagine this time? Because last time it was his friend going to a movie theater and trans people trying to have an orgy with her son. <laughs> and then the time after that, it was uh, his like some guy yelling at a guy who is racist that he should also be prejudiced against trans people. And then it was Rod in a bathroom. Like it just it goes in all these directions. It's very Pinchon esque. It's beautiful, hateful but beautiful because of his creativity. At least he's trying. And it's it's amazing as well because it's and you really touched on something perfectly because there are like two readers of these rants with their on Twitter on their blogs. It's either people they already know or people like you and me who are just there to watch how shitty it gets. Like a reality TV show that's free and 24-7. Like this wonderful thread I found where some random fucking dude who... It's always the same fucking guy. It's like a dude with like a blonde mustache and a vague distant stare covered up with sunglasses of some type and usually a bike helmet. And it's like, hey, it's time for you list of every conservative columnist to all debate about Trump. And then Kurt Schlichter, of course he's there, because this is fucking important. My entire argument, Trump is less, worse, done. Fucking nail it, nail, nail in the coffin. And then I get it, now convince, list of the rest of them, or just debate them publicly. And then it just gets angrier and angrier of just none of the columnists, just random fucking people getting so mad and it ends with all caps. Less worse than any DC, DC trash. Those people are my favorite. I like it. Yeah, I like those people. Like, have you noticed, like, now just any election season, it's people, like, you get a lot of replies from people who don't follow you because they're just, like, searching words to yell yeah. at. I, I kind of love it. I, I, I want to imagine these people at home. Like, are they sad? Are they bored? Is it, like, me searching for Benedict Evans tweets to laugh at? Or is it that they genuinely are like, fucking hope nobody's tweeting good things about Hillary Clinton. Oh, there they are. Motherfucker. Jeremy, cancel my calls. Have you seen this? That, like, people, if they tweet at this one guy, Al Giordano, who's, like, this sort of weird grifter character uh, who, like, just is suddenly pro-Hillary right. after criticizing her endlessly... <laughs> like the past 20 years, I don't want to yeah. say. If you tweet at him, he will, like, he'll, they'll, something will happen where someone will try to log onto your account and do the forgot my password thing. And people, like, your account will get locked for suspicious activity. That's happened to me three times this week. Is this the same? Really? Yeah. And is it, is this the same fellow who talks about deadlifting? Because that's my favorite recent one I've seen. Uh, is this a guy who isn't me? No, there's a columnist and... Oh, Nassim Taleb. Yes, this... That's Nassim Taleb, that guy, yeah. 
that guy is amazing. It's like every he does these incredibly long posts, like these just rambling, fucking empty things of just such amazing boredom. That by the end of it, I'm not really I I've, I've glazed over, and it always ends with yep, Danny doesn't deadlift. No, yeah, he's Nassim Taleb. In some ways, I'm very similar to uh, <laughs> Mister to Doctor Taleb. Uh, he gets into a lot of arguments with Saudis. Right. I shouldn't say Saudis, but like sort of rich, like rich, well-to-do Saudis uh, who are arguing in favor of the regime, and he'll always like capstone it with uh go how much do you deadlift saudi boy like that's a literal thing that he said what and uh, i mean it's kind of but he's also like kind of insane like anyone is on there but i just I, that that is a and that's an amazing mad that's an amazing form of mad because it's both intellectualism and straight up asshole frat boy fuckery no not even frat boy i mean high school of, oh yeah what can you lift bitch i kind of like it though i kind of like it because at least it's honest it's honest i like his picture and i realize this is like the cheapest shot ever but his picture is him with like doing the kind of thinker pose and it's definitely like something is <laughs> like yes i'll buy your sister at a good price <laughs> i your wife shall fetch a fine price on the open market He's like the bad guy from Taken. He looks like he looks like if they did a remake of <laughs> Casino Royale in Hungary, <laughs> he would he would play Le Chief. <laughs> yes. Yes, he would. Or he looks like oh let's let's just really stare into those beautiful dead eyes and say No, he's the bad guy from Taken. He is absolutely like the bad guy from Taken who thinks he's untouchable that Liam Neeson just fucking destroys. You mean the shake? Yeah, I, I'm thinking about. It's been a while since I've watched Taken, but it's just one of my favorite executions in a movie ever because it's basically the a copy of the Indiana Jones sword fight scene where he's like, "Ha ha ha! I have your daughter," and just clean these and fucking shoots him in the head. That's like that's they need to stop doing that in movies. I'm sick of like the guy in movies, like they're like, "Oh, he isn't just gonna shoot over my shoulder." That's like you know that's every every. That happens every level in Max Payne. Every single level. I like the... He doesn't, though, because he tries to do a speech and he gets, like, three syllables out. And Liam Neeson just shoots him in the head because Liam Neeson has, like, jumped 20 feet, hurt his leg. He's been all... He shot a dude in the leg and then threatened his wife. And someone has taken his daughter. He's just a mad dad. He's actually the maddest anyone who's been in a movie. I, like, I wonder, like, so we got to take in three, right? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't... I would just give up probably after two. Well, I like all three of the movies, and... In, no, I mean, like, if I was Liam Neeson, I would have given up. I'd be like, all right, fucking keep her this time. Well, that's the thing. That's, that's like, bordering on a Deadpool joke. So, you, you, oh, and, you it, and Ryan oh, Reynolds... Oh, fuck me. I was traveling today, and I'm not... I don't have my... I, like, ran out of it. No, it's okay. It's, it just means that, on the fly, you came up with a joke as funny as Ryan Reynolds can. Uh, you, uh, and you two are very similar. You... Play, you do you, do you want to play cards against humanity? Oh, right? epic bacon. <laughs> and drink, drink Will Wheaton Woot oh, Stout. Fuck, fucking... Sh- that's, who, that's who I am now. Well, actually, here's, here's a good way to, to get back to being mad. I'll tell you, there is shit that gets me mad online, and I get mad at stupid shit. I, but I accept it. It's part of who I am. Being mad is me. And Will Wheaton is absolutely one of those fucking things. I... I'm sorry if you're a listener and you love Will Wheaton. I'm sorry if you are Will Wheaton and you hear this. Sure, you're a lovely fella. But there is some fucking board game thing where he is, like, on it. And this dude's claim to fame is he was, like, a, like a wimpy kid in Star Trek. And, like, he's like, he's like, yeah, and this is a fiasco. And he goes on these fucking crusades. And he's just like, just, dude, just fucking, like, you know what? Just, uh, like, buy into the thing that you're famous for something fucking worthless, and I would respect you so much. Like, there's so much, there's so much, or just, you know what? Double down on it, be like, I fucking love being Wesley Crusher, or whatever the fuck that, I, maybe that was the Doctor? I don't remember Star Trek that well. I've never seen Star Trek, but from what I understand, uh, Will Wheaton, he played, like, an annoying character, right? Yeah. Well, and yeah, I think... And he like got self conscious about it, and now he's like, he'll like go, he'll like quote a Donald Trump tweet and be like, "What the actual fuck?" 
Gun. And he's like always doing like nerd things, but he's like trying to do the nerd thing where he's cool, which like it's a nerd's idea of cool, so it means that he's like fucking wearing uh, uh g- like dist- like distressed jeans. Yeah. Uh a t shirt and then a blazer. And the t shirt's like one of those like communist party t shirts. Or a Stalin. And the smile on his face yeah. says, Do not leave me alone with your sixteen year old sister. I don't know. I'm not gonna I want to just state, uh, for the one party of the podcast who cannot afford legal defense, I, Felix Biederman, am not alleging that Will Whedon uh, is a statutory offender. I am also not stating that for the record. I have not texted my counsel yet. I will immediately. But I will say, he doesn't offend me as much as this... F- my counsel is Kurt Schlichter, by the way. He, he is a lawyer. Yeah, hashtag caring and caring. <laughs> LP. <laughs> he, do, he crashes his sob through the courthouse. <laughs> He doesn't... S- Call back, baby. <laughs> and I, I, I am stealing that so much from the click hole quiz of Garbage Sons just because I love the phrase, I don't cry, I sob. It's it's just perfect. <laughs> well, sob, sob, I feel like, is like a, it's like a well-used comedic device car. Kind of. Well, what's really funny, and random aside, is it, I reckon it will probably not be funny anymore in like two minutes because too many people use it, or... They'll get good because there's this company called Skoda in England that was like the shit car. And then they got really good and people started buying them. So people had to like be like, haha, nice Skoda. And people be like, yeah, it's actually great. And they really feel bad. But no, tell you what, nobody in PR, social media, they don't seem to really get mad. They don't seem to actually get fucking pissed off. And I tell you, Nick fucking Bilton, this fucking guy, he used to work at the New York Times and I am mad. I am mad red and nude. And I'm, I, I couldn't rant about this because I got to it like seven days late. But let me read you this title. It filled me full of fucking bile. But I'm going to pick out one bit that really pissed me off. But just the title alone. How ISIS became the world's deadliest tech startup. Fuck you. But wait. No, that's not a real fucking thing. Fuck it's you. It's real. And, but wait, it gets better. And he, of course, ties it immediately to the Orlando shooting. And he, of didn't I? Didn't I want to write something like this for you? And you're like, no, that's like <laughs> the, the, it'll it'll get me in trouble. It turns out I like presaged how fucking stupid someone would. Well, it's be. Nick Bilton who famously wrote the most derivative and empty piece about like pen. He wrote like he has like to shit out a column like once a month, I think, for the New York Times, or he used to. And he used to like rack his brain every week, and he was like, I got it. I'm gonna write about fucking pens. Or one he wrote about, like, which is, and it genuinely haven't been through a divorce. I feel for the guy when his marriage ending, but he began it and he immediately was like talking about like drinking whiskey and looking at Facebook pictures. Fucking hell, touching the depths of the human soul. Badass. Yeah, just wow. But really, everything he's done good in this world is removed by this fucking piece. This is absolute trash. I could not be angrier that this is out here. Because not only is it conflating the dumbest fucking shit in the world with the dumb it, basically his argument is that ISIS is the, the like ISIS uses technology better than most tech startups I quote the, and then he says some security company has noted oh it's a counter terrorism organization sorry a real company has noted in the past that ISIS utilizes almost every social app imaginable to communicate and share its propaganda so just so we're clear you are only a successful startup this is a guy who covered them for like a decade if you use a lot of the talking apps, you're fucking, you're just fucking wrong. Just wrong in the title, wrong in the fucking... Technology has, in a very real way, allowed ISIS to create its terror network with all kinds of efficiencies. Fucking, of course it fucking has. Fucking, just Al-Qaeda use fucking phones, I imagine. I bet they fucking use the fucking internet. It, it, they're real people. Is is this the view of America? The, the, is ISIS, like, do they believe that every member of ISIS is just some fucking idiot there's like duh, 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 and they like haplessly drop a bomb into a place like like it like whoop, and the bomb blows up. no they are calculated terrorists they're scary as fuck because of the the complete nuance this twat misses and also like how do you think like how else would terrorists communicate like smoke signals but wait there's a worse quote that's gonna make you so angry just prepare yourself take a big fucking deep breath ISIS has truly disrupted the very notion of war. Fuck you. Fuck it, that isn't even correct. That's not even fucking right. 
That's not even a fuck. This guy doesn't even know anything about well, war. computers. He's he's writing for Vanity Fair about two topics he fucking knows nothing about. And this is like this is something people should be. When you think of all the vacuous, empty shit that people get mad about, this is something to be mad about. Not because he's shitty. Like, by all means, be mad about that. But, like, this is such a fucking, like, this is just playing more into the white, rich, twat view of, like, every member of ISIS is some fucking dipshit who's the da, da, da. thus his religion is stupid, thus his beliefs are stupid, thus he is an idiot, thus everyone in ISIS is bad and dumb, and we hate them when we can look down on them. Which is exactly the kind of elitism that has fucked up two countries and is fucking up elections, and is actually causing more terror. What? Like, what the f- I don't- I don't get it. How has ISIS disrupted war? Like, it's- it's a conventional insurgency. Like, they use suicide bombings, they don't have that good- their infantry isn't that good. They use suicide bombings, and then they- commit atrocities as sort of a multiplier to ethnically cleanse towns to get more people. Like, what? And But wait, the next sentence is actually even funnier. We don't need tanks and guns to destroy this enemy as much as we need technology and data. In fact, American officials don't even know exactly who we are fighting and how many of them there are. You know what this is called? This is a classic. You know, I would... It's in the genre of clever by half. Like, too clever by half. Like, you, you just... You just outthought yourself. But this isn't that. This is just like, this is like they, he doesn't even know what he's saying. He doesn't even. He's not even. He's just like plugging things in. Like, uh, yeah, no, like fucking throw data at the problem. Why did he have to write this? Why the most paragraph like, is actually worse. worse. I'm sorry, I have to read this to you. Ironically, as much as we want to change the thinking of Islamic extremists, you can be sure that the people we're fighting want us to stubbornly maintain our current mindset. So that's part one of what's going to make you angry. So just, by all means, respond. Uh, okay, what... Isn't that wrong, factually? Ah, oh, God, fucking... <laughs> Run the... Can you read that sentence again? Ironically, as much as we want to change the thinking of Islamic extremists, you can be sure that pe the people we're fighting want us to stubbornly maintain our current mindset. Okay, first of all... And then he links to a fucking NRA tweet. And it's about the Second Amendment. Uh, and then... These ideas are not connected. These are not connected... ISIS doesn't give a fuck about the NRA. Oh, but wait. <laughs> and I got... I buy your logic... I have also proven my own point, which is, oh, and I quote, while nearly crying, while ISIS needs to evade laws to wreak havoc in other countries, they were able to do so in America without breaking a single law. Apart from the terrorism one? Yeah, no, like the murder law. And also, like, that isn't... And then it ends with buying American-made guns is easy and legal here. Just fucking dick, fuck off, fuck. Just fuck. And also, also, like, that Mateen wasn't an ISIS operative. Like, he just started killing people and then was like, I support ISIS. It doesn't make it, like, an ISIS operative. Like, he was, the more we find out about the case, we're like, okay, this was, like, a guy with, like, some, he was really fucked up. He, it wasn't really that he was a devout Salafist or anything. It was, like, he was fucked up. He was confused sexually. He, some people say he, like, got rejected at the club or something. He was, like, grappling with his own self-hatred. Yeah. And then just, like, in the middle of killing people because he was nuts, he said, oh, I, I pledge allegiance to ISIS. He also said that he, before, like, he pledged allegiance to Hezbollah, which is an armed group that has killed more ISIS members than any other group. So, you know, you make up your fucking mind here what's going on with that. But to call this an ISIS operation... You, this fucking shit dick spends the entire article telling you what ISIS does and doesn't want. What they want is for any for us to call any fucking Yahoo mass shooter for for us to call him an ISIS operative, which they're fucking not. Jesus Christ! And, but it gets worse. It really gets worse because this paragraph involving so it's you can be sure that the people we're fighting. Want us to stubbornly maintain our current mindset. So this is suggesting, by the way, that ISIS wants us to make guns easy to buy. Just so we're clear on how fucking stupid that argument is. Generally, terrorists don't care about laws. They don't, like, it's like, ah, time to kill the infidel. Oh, wait, fuck, is that illegal? 
Shit, murder's illegal in America. Guys, go home. Go home. Sorry. Shut up shop. This is the only fucking paragraph in thousands of irrelevant, worthless, backward words about guns. And it's like, and the best weapon at their disposal is none other than the American-built internet with its American-run social media sites. Wait, but didn't the sentence before that you say that guns were their best... What is their best weapon here, dipshit? Do you know... Do you know what computers are? Do you know what guns are? Do you know what ISIS is? Like, basic questions I want to ask him, except he blocked me for making fun of his pens. This... This isn't just... This is... When I immediately look at it, it hits me in the face with how incompetent its reading of terrorism or asymmetrical warfare theory is, or even just basic understanding of technology or law. But that sort of obscures how terribly written it is. These are the most tortured sentences I have ever read. This is just, you know how they say like, uh, that like, you know, some writers just have, they have a, they have a, they have a great insight to the most perfect sounding sentence. Like Hemingway would write these very short, terse sentences that all together in the grand picture of a story created a very, uh, a very grim, grim or uh, evocative thematic setting or that uh, Richard Yates could describe ennui and pain and internal misery or that, Richard Wright was so far ahead of his time and creating cinematic scenes of suspense and panic. This guy has like the perfect ear, the the perfect sense for writing a sentence in the most unreadable and confusing way possible. So as he starts off making a point and by the end of it, he trips over his own <laughs> dick and both of his nuts get tied together in a slip knot. And what's great as well is he actually shares something and it's and he's a former Times columnist, now writing for Vanity Fair. So I'm imagining between those jobs, he was just like, you know what? I didn't get to jack off enough at the time, so I'm gonna have a go here. And he does a slit a schlichter, in the same way that if you remember my favorite fanfic of all time, how we beat ISIS, I believe by by a, a prophet Kirk Schlichter. That was a better article than. And this. it was funnier and more interesting, and actually more factually correct, despite being factual. Way more. But what's great is they both quote kinds of guns. So, its social media presence, referring to ISIS, undoubtedly enticed Omar Mateen, who bought his Sig Sauer MCX at a gun shop near his home, and of course Kurt named the brave accountant that pulled out a Kemba 1911 handgun and shot the bad man in the, in the chest in his fanfic, which he wrote one-handed. They're both do- they're, they're both doing the same fucking thing, and this is what makes me mad. This this is a good thing to be mad at. That no doubt, I bet if you search right now, this title is like "We're Real Deep Man." When this is exactly, you know what? This article, more than anything, in my opinion, is what terror groups fucking want to see. They want to see pontificating elitist wonks sit there and go, "I know about guns. I've read books. I'm gonna quote fucking some like." Joshua Cooper Ramo. I hope he's no one famous that I should know to prove I'm intelligent. But regardless, terrorism is fundamentally a psychological warfare, so on a connected system, it becomes a million times more effective. You know what? I'm going to bet that Amama team probably heard about ISIS not from Twitter or Facebook. He probably saw it on the news. Maybe he heard about someone mentioning it on Facebook. Or maybe he just fucking heard about it because he was not white and he was in Florida and everyone's sort of like, hey, you're ISIS. Like at the door of the club. Yeah, it's almost like it was a major, like it was a major global event, and he would have found out about it regardless. Like the, <laughs> this fucking armed group took massive, massive amounts of territory in two nations. Like it, it's almost like it was an, impossible not to find out about it. But like you, you said, like you know, in the in the vein of what terrorists want, you know what helped create ISIS. It is shit like this. It's like some fucking asshole who's too clever by half, who's puts gives you a PowerPoint. It's like, here's how you defeat the insurgency. That's how you get like David Petraeus going like, ah, well, we have to give guns to Al Qaeda to fight ISIS because that like that's the exact type of fucking head up your ass thinking 
that causes you to fund the groups that become whatever. That's the kind of thinking that gave us the fucking Taliban that helped give rise to the Hikanis. It's that. It's being too clever by fucking half each and every time. It's thinking you can go into a situation with your knowledge of fucking cell phones or apps or whatever the fuck Nick Bilton is supposed to know about and go, well, here's how I'm going to apply it to this situation. And it's that shit. And I, I like... I genuinely, genuinely want to know, like, I I would, as horrible as this sounds, I'd love to know Isis's reaction to this. Like, did they read it and just go, ah, <laughs> fucking twat. They're, they're, they're actually, uh, they're on, they're now going to be on News Genius <laughs> with me and, and Virgil Texas. They're, we'll actually be annotating together. Like, we don't agree with everything, obviously. You've got to hear both sides. But yeah, no, and it's like we we both work what like my and Virgil's Iraqi equivalents, Iraq, ISIS member Iraqi equivalents who were higher ups in the Bath Party and also satirical writers of the Iraqi Carl Diggler are going to be annotating with us and like look, we have different ideas about what is what is kafir and what isn't, what is haram and what isn't, but you know together we are. We're going to be annotating, and it's going to be good, and you guys are going to it's, like it. Uh, what's Felix? Felix Biederman. I'll come up with a funny name later. But seventy-two virgins, Texas seems quite funny. I just thought I'd say that. Feel feel good about? No, nope. okay. Well, um, <laughs> this guy as well, and we'll we'll wrap up with this, which is just this is the same genius that wrote. Will Google or Facebook buy Twitter? My dinner with Peter Thiel. Fucking hell! There's a dinner at Rat Poison myself out, and. My favorite headline subheadline combination of all time, Twitter is betting everything on Jack Dorsey. Will it work? Subhead and vice versa? Question mark. Dude, do you know do you do you write in English? It uh, This guy's like the It just there's so much going on. There's so much like additional bullshit. It's like you know it's like, it's like using a Windows phone kind yeah. of. You don't know why it's doing what it's doing. <laughs> like the settings. Yeah. The settings is like, it's like in another part. Like it's hidden in the photos app. Yeah. Yeah. You're looking at it and you go like, why, why did you, why did you put this here? Why did you think someone would like this? Yeah. What the fuck is going on here? Well, some, some fucking twat once said brevity is the soul of wit. And I don't have anything clever to actually turn that into because I've read this and it's rotted my fucking brain. It's like, it's empty. It's it's actually thousands of empty fucking ideas and words written in a way that would no doubt antagonize anyone reading it with sense. I really feel like, but also genuinely offensive to so many people. Like it's it, it it's just it's actually an offensive article. I mean, it's offensive to anyone who knows anything at all. <laughs> but it's. It's also like, yeah, brevity is the soul of wit. You shouldn't write sentences that are longer than they need to be, that are filled just f- filled to the brim with shit you don't need for things that people don't, you know, like they say in fiction, you know, did, uh, because it happened is the worst reason to stick something in a story. It's that type of thing. But if you have a strategy for fighting terrorism, I don't think it should be 800 words. It should probably be more than that. Right? It's got to be. <laughs> There's a lot of fucking moving parts there. And also, I think when I call upon my my government to fight ISIS myself, when, when as Kurt has warned me many times, I've stocked up on the 500 guns I need, and the Obama has attempted to take them, but me and my fellow patriots have stopped them, and ISIS... I don't think I'm calling a, du- a guy who grew up in Leeds, who moved to America and wrote about technology while jacking off for years and then went to Vanity Fair to do the same thing, to fucking talk about ISIS or guns. And he's even in California, which is like not like the state to write. Like, like it, It's so easy to find. Dude, there's like 45 minutes from where San Francisco is. There's like three gun stores. Just walk into one and be like, how do I gun? Tell me about gun. I am doing research on, on like, the one column I write every month. I have all the time in the fucking world. T- tell me. Because how insightful would that be? If you're going to make it about guns, make it about that. Shit. Why not, instead of finding a fucking author, go and talk to someone who knows about 
a, a, a ISIS. Yeah, he could have. He could have talked to like any number of experts. For he this. could have talked to a fucking RSO at a gun range and got more into this article. But he clearly wanted to like avoid the gun debate and like have like the killer ending. The, but like it wasn't killer. It was. It, it just made me want to die. Yeah. No. Like it's. I mean, to, to dovetail back to the beginning, people want you to live in their in their movie. And as we've always talked about with the the emotional fuck it, just dog shit uh dog shit emotional appeals and West Wing type imitation that you have in the gun debate, he's trying to get you to step into his movie and no one will do it because can't even write a sentence properly. And on that note, I'm going to end the maddest and longest we've gone with just... That was, wow, that was, holy shit, we almost went two yeah, hours. Just, that's how angry we are. And I'll put the last thing that I was angry, and not for the reason you'd think, I was listening to a podcast called Tra- Chapo Trap House, I believe, the other day, and it's now turned into a radio play about a angry British governor <laughs> and a young Portuguese hand of his and personally i find it terribly unrealistic as i am not the upset governor however i felt like all the accents and story were completely realistic it's exact no it is like all people from portugal are active sailors <laughs> yeah and who are trying to trying to steward the portuguese empire that was dissolved in 1979 <laughs> exactly and all british people are just angry and angry about lorries specifically lorries you see a lorry it's kind of like you know dogs chase the mailman we're just like oh what's a fucking lorry hey hey no yeah it's it's like playing the game watch dogs <laughs> what bad <laughs> yes <laughs> people have called the upset governor bad <laughs> but i would like to see them write a script and it, that and that is it that's it i'm calling it for this wonderful episode about being mad i'm in citron I'm Felix Biederman. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for tolerating us. And we will get you next week. Cheers. Cheers.